What is up guys, it's Jay here, Jay Media One. Today we are not back with another product tech review. Today we are back with some tips and tricks to using a Mac and iOS part one. This is going to be a series because listening to the community, which is you guys, you have told me that you want to learn more about Mac and iOS. I have a ton of knowledge in this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave a link up here. I want you guys to go to my email. I want you to put in subject for Mac OS tips and tricks and tell me what you want to see because I have a ton of knowledge and I'd like to share it with you guys. Today, we're going to do some basic tips and tricks. It's going to be a short video, but we're going to get you some ideas on how to set up your Mac, how to use it to become more productive. So without further ado, here we go, guys. Okay, so the first tip and trick we got for you guys is to copy and paste text between devices. A really cool tip I love about Macs and iPhones is the way you can copy text on one device and then paste it directly onto another. For example, if you highlight some text on your phone and then you pick on copy, you can go to your MacBook and you can paste that text directly there. So, I mean, just in basic notes, we all know that notes are super, super cool because in notes you can go in here and do all kinds of cool things on your phone and then you can paste them directly into the note and when you open up notes on your Mac, there's the note. But what you guys may not have known is that anything that you copy on your iPhone or your iPad will go ahead and paste anywhere you like on your Mac. <clears throat> this could be a really cool feature if you're reading a document or you're doing something really cool and you just wanna paste that text. So if you right click and click paste, it's going to show up on your Mac and that's fantastic. So that's a really, really cool feature you guys need to know about. But what you also need to know is you need to make sure that your Bluetooth and your Wi-Fi are switched on for both devices for this to work. You'll also need to be logged on to the same iCloud account on both of these devices, which shouldn't be a problem for most of you guys. Most of you guys are already set up on the, the, uh, the same iCloud devices on everything. This is just another cool part of the Mac slash iOS slash iPad OS ecosystem. So give that one a shot, guys. I think you'll really like it. The second trip tip I would like to share with you is to screenshot part of your screen by holding the command and shift and pressing the number four key. So let's get out of here. And if we hit shift command four, we see this little dot come up here and this is like a little target. You can click on anywhere on the screen and you click it and you see that it pops down in the corner here. From here, we can do some cool things as well. Inside of here, we can sketch this. We can draw on top of it. If you guys have sidecar going on on your computer, you can um, go ahead and bring this over to your iPad. And right here, you can see where I have the J Media One iPad Pro in range. So you can go on your iPad, you can use your Apple Pencil and you can sketch right up there. You can also do some cool things like you can create a signature here. You can add the signature to any kind of um, PDF document or any document that you're working on. If you want to create a signature, it allows you to create one on the trackpad, as you can see. You can do it from the camera or you can do it from your iPhone or your iPad, which will allow you to let your uh, finger be the device that creates that. So if I click on that, click anywhere to begin, I just start using my trackpad and there's my signature. Now, given that is a very terrible signature, but you can click any key when you're finished with this and boom, there's your signature. It's going to load inside of there and then you have a, a signature set up and ready to go. And the, the cool part about that is, is you see my signature here. I can click my signature and attach it to this document anywhere. Then I can go around here and I can resize my signature so I can make it bigger or smaller and I can put it anywhere I like inside of the document. And that is just super cool, guys. I mean, you got all kinds of different things. You can scribble inside of here. You can draw on the document. You can crop it. You can change the different sizes of your lines and things like that. If you want to add text, you can add text. You can add an image description. 
So you can save this as whatever image description you'd like, and that way you have that description saved there forever. When you're done with it, you can save it. You can click on this done button and it'll save. You can also click on this button to airdrop it, to share it, to mail it to somebody, anything that you like, or you can simply click on the trash button and it will go away. The next cool tr uh, trick and tip that I have for you guys is you can do math computations and currency conversions in the Spotlight search bar. The Spotlight search bar is extremely useful. You should never go without using this and no one should ever not know about this. So what you do to get it up the quickest, you can click on the, the little magnifying glass here. So up in the corner here and boom, Spotlight search shows up. Or if you want to get in there quicker, you can click on Command and Spacebar simultaneously bringing up Spotlight. At that point in time, if you want to do some math, you do 5 plus 5. And it already pops up with the 10. I didn't even hit Enter. It just automatically pops up and tells me that that will equal 10. You can do some really cool things like if you would just want to search on the web for fun or cool things like that, it'll find documents inside of the files that you have saved. It'll find um, keywords inside of your notes. If you want to get to some place on your Mac that, um, you know, typically you would have to go through different search options to get to, right here, if you want to go to Finder, you just type in Finder, boom, you click on Finder and there everything is inside of Finder. So Spotlight is super important and everybody should uh, know about Spotlight and should be using Spotlight because it will save you a ton, a ton of time. Another cool tip and trick is to preview files and media quickly. To preview or review or highlight a file super fast, you just click on the file and you hit the space bar button and boom, you're open. You can click on open with preview from there and at that point in time, you can go ahead and do the same thing. You can sketch, you can, um, crop the document, you can mark it up, you can do the signature, you can do all kinds of cool things. And that's just a super, super fast way of doing that. Another cool thing that I think everyone needs to know about is the swipe with three fingers. I think a lot of people know about the swipe with two fingers, but the swipe with the, uh, three fingers will allow your workflow to be easier and faster if you use the trackpad movements for this. Um, and you can use the three finger swipe up to access all open windows or three finger side swipe to access the the desktop. So if we open up just a basic Safari page here and I swipe up with three fingers, you'll see that it brings in this drop down menu. And up top, you have a second desktop. If you want to add another desktop, you simply click on the plus button over here. And now you have a third desktop. And the cool part is, is all your desktops stay saved up here in this bar. So now we can go to back to desktop two, we can go back to desktop one, and now if we use our three fingers to swipe left or right, we can swipe in between those desktops. This is massive for productivity. If you guys are using a Mac for work and you want to swipe between desktops, say you have a desktop open with maybe a video or a conference, another desktop open that you wanna take some notes on, and you can simply switch back and forth just by using the, that three finger swipe, which is pretty, pretty cool. The next tip that I have for you is you can copy and paste text right out of a photo. So all you have to do is use your iPad or your iPhone and you open up your camera and then you take a simple picture of any text. So you use your camera, take a picture of the text with your phone, and then at that point in time, you go to the photo and you click on the text. Once you click on the text, it'll give you the option to highlight. You highlight the text, then you can click on copy. You can go over to your notes application or any application from this point in time and click on paste. And once you do that, you've just stolen the text directly out of the photo. This is a new AI feature that was released with iOS 15 that is super duper handy. And I think everyone should know about it. The Better Snap tool is awesome. And you can see right here on my toolbar, I already have it up and loaded. But if you guys don't have it, you simply go into the App Store here. You type in Better Snap and you just hit enter and it's going to pop right up. Mine says open because I already have it, but it's this better snap tool here. It's got 9.4K reviews because it is awesome. And so once you get the better snap tool and you can open it here, 
And when you open it, it gives you tons and tons of options. So your general settings will allow you to snap the window from corner to corner, top to side. And it will allow you to make a, a split screen pretty fast and easily. This has been a Windows feature since I believe Windows 7, maybe a little bit sooner. But um, you don't really have this option on a Mac. So I think this is really cool and everyone needs to know. You can also do some customizations here. You can change your border width. If you like, uh, you can change the background color. You can make it uh, appear different colors. So you can have like this little contrast here. You can make it animated for as long as you like. You can use rounded corners to whatever pixels you like. Um, if you want to disable this, you can set up hotkeys here. So you can use shift and up or function or your control button or your command button. Um, you can click on display before snapping, which will display what it looks like before it actually snaps. You can restore old window size if the window is dragged away again, which I really, really like that because it gives you that same kind of feel if anyone's ever used a, a Windows PC, you know what I'm talking about. Keyboard shortcuts. So if you want it to be in the left half, you can click here. You can record a shortcut for that. Right half, same thing. Top half, bottom half, center, so on and so forth. My main focus with using something like this, if I open Safari, is I would use it to snap to one side. So you see how quick and easy that was. If I open up a new window and I drag it out of here, I could snap and bring it into the other side as well. Now I want this window up top, I just drag it up top and you see how it highlights it there. And it brings the whole window into view. So this is a fantastic tool that I use on every device. As soon as I get it, I get this. Um, snap areas, just to let you change custom sizes if you like which is pretty cool if you want to have more of like an iPhone look with the, the short sidebar, you can do something like that as well. So definitely get a hold of the better snap tool. I think it does cost a minor amount of money, maybe $5 or something like that, but it's definitely worth it. Another cool feature that I think you guys should know about is this toolbar up here. And basically this toolbar up here gives you all kinds of different options. Um, if you go up here, you can change your Wi-Fi here. You can click on Bluetooth. It will allow you to change your Bluetooth devices. It's just a really cool like little widget drop down. If you want to do AirDrop, you can click on your AirDrop, turn that on and off. Uh, I have mine set to Do Not Disturb. You can change your keyboard brightness right inside of the menu, which is pretty cool. If you want to mirror your screen, change your sound. If you want to play some music, you can go ahead and play. click on Play Your Music, and it will start playing your music right inside of there as well. So it's got some really cool features up with just this toolbar here. If you go up in here, you can see that there's like screen recording. I got my better snap tool up inside there and because I want it to show and you don't have to have it show, but I like having it show up inside of there. It also shows my Wi-Fi. You can show your battery. You can go to battery preferences and change some things inside of here just directly from this toolbar. So that's one of the super cool features that I like. Uh, Siri is also up here, so if you want to access Siri, you can click that and Siri will open right up so you can go straight into uh, Siri as well. And also the date and time, just some cool things. So you can customize this, you can make it however you like, but um, for the most part, just having the basic drop downs and things like that as far as display, you can change your uh, dark mode if you want to turn dark mode on or off. You can do that right here just by clicking a button. Night shift, same thing. You can turn it on. You can turn true tone on if you like. And then you can go directly to your display preferences. Right here, I have my brightness pretty maxed out, but you can change your brightness as well. Um, and it tells you, it says it's a P3 to 1600 nits, which is super cool. I like to have my screen bright, so that's why I do that. But that is a very cool feature that you guys should definitely know about. Okay guys, so another really, really cool feature that I think is just how to rename a file super easy in, in a Mac. So what you do is you click on the file that you want and you simply just hit the return button. Once you do that, it automatically highlights the text. You name it J's Newt and you hit return again and boom, it's done. It's renamed. So typically on a file, you'd have to go right click, rename, all that jazz. This is just a super fast and simple way to do it. Click on it, hit return, type it whatever you want, and <clears throat> hit return again, and boom, it's saved. Very, very cool feature, super quick and easy, but you guys should definitely know about it.
Uh, the other cool feature is the, the add a signature to any document. We kind of showed you that inside a preview here. But if you have just a standard PDF, um, you know, opened up here and you need to add your signature to it, that is uh, super, super easy and simple because you click on the little markup button right here. That's what that is, a little pencil, but it's a markup toolbar. And then you have your signature here and mine is already saved. You can delete this. You can create a new one at any point in time. And like I said, it gives you the different options to do that. But in general, if you have your signature saved, you click on your signature and you drag it over here and it's on there. And then you can resize your signature, make it bigger or smaller, put it wherever you like inside of the document. And then once you click off the document, it's going to be saved inside of there. So if I open it back up, you will see that the, the, uh, the signature is already saved inside of the document. Super cool if you're signing a lot of documents. Um, particularly if you're buying something like a car, you have to do contract copies, things like that. It's super fancy and nice to use, and it's very, very easy. So you guys should know about it. Import from, from is a super cool feature I think you guys should know about as well. Um, import from is pretty cool. You click on, right click on the desktop, you go to import from, and you can see your devices will pop up right here. Um, and you can import from like this one here is my phone. I can click on take a photo or scan documents or add a sketch. Same thing with my M1. If I want to, I can click on add a sketch and it'll say add a sketch with your M1 using your iPad to create a sketch. Then that's going to pop up on my iPad. Create a sketch. Once I create a sketch on my iPad, I can go back here and the sketch will pop right up here on the desktop. So it's got some really cool features. You can scan documents with it too. take a photo. So you click on take a photo, it'll say use your iPad's camera to take a photo. Once you take a photo with your iPad, uh, let's just see if we can get that to work here. So you click on that, take a photo with the iPad, and boom, it'll, it'll pop right up here on the device, which is super cool. So import is very cool. You guys should know about it. It is super easy to access. You just right click anywhere on the desktop and it will import it for you. Hey guys, so another really cool feature is stacks, and I know a lot of you have probably heard about this, but if you have a messy desktop, a lot of people do, if you right click on the file and, or right click on the desktop, I'm sorry, and you click on uh, use stacks, what stacks does is it takes all that messy documentation just all around the screen and it stacks it into these nice piles here. And what these piles are is they're just like documents. So if you have a bunch of PDF documents, it'll put it into PDF documents. If you have a bunch of movies, it'll put it in movies. Same thing with music and things like that. So Stax is super, super handy and neat. And it just allows you to keep everything super clean and organized on your desktop. One of the biggest ones of them all is AirDrop. And everyone should know how to use AirDrop. You can use AirDrop to share documentation to other Mac and iOS devices. And the way that you do this is you go to your file and you can right click on your file and you click on share and you click on AirDrop. And once you click on AirDrop, it's going to show all the devices in range that you can AirDrop this to. And so if you click on the person's name, so like if I click on my wife here, it will say waiting. And then when she accepts the file from me as an airdrop, it will start to send. So I can send this to my, uh, let's just click X to stop that. And I can send this to my iPad. And right there, it's popping up on my iPad. And we could just put on where we want to open this file with, because it's asking me. And so I could just say there, and it will open it up in your email. It will open it up in your files if you like to. If you open it up in your email, you can autom it'll automatically uh, set it up so that it can send an email um, directly from that PDF document. So AirDrop is super cool for sending files, and I use it all the time. I use AirDrop to send videos from one device to the next. I use it to send photos. It's very, very fast. It's way faster than basically any other way to, to send a file. So AirDrop, everyone should know about and use. It is awesome. Okay, guys, another cool feature. If you want to close programs or things like that on your Mac and you have a program open here, the quickest way to do that is to hit Command-Q. Once you hit Command-Q, everything completely just closes. Uh, Spacebar and Command opens up the spotlight back again so you can get right back in there. But yeah, if you have a file or, or a document or a web page or anything open and you hit Command-Q, it, it will be gone.
Simple other commands while we're at it. <laughs> if you're inside of notes and you're just typing into a document and you want to select that document, you just click on it, drag it over, and you hit Command C. Command C copies the document, you hit Command V below it, and it will paste. You can also do things like Command X. Command X is good for cutting, so Command X will cut it completely out and then paste it back in. Um, that's good if you don't want to just copy, you just want to get it rid of it up here. So if I want to get rid of this, I want to get rid of this, and I want to get rid of this, and then bring them down here and then paste, paste, paste. So you can just continue to paste if you like. But yes, the Command X, Command V, and Command C are some of the most popular. Most people probably already know about them, but if you don't, you should. Another cool feature is the tap to click. So if you click on your trackpad, you have to click down a little bit and you can feel like this little bit of haptic feedback that happens when you do that. But a really cool tip to know about, and I'm just gonna use Spotlight to get there. If we go to settings, um, which is super easy to do. It'll take up your system preferences. You go to your trackpad down here and you have all these different options. So if you go to point to click, it says tap to click and you can tap it with one finger. At this point, you don't have to push down and get that haptic feedback. You just simply tap. This is one of the first things that I turn on when I get a new Mac. You also have the option to secondary click with two fingers. If you click on this drop down, it will let you select different options. So your secondary click can be click in the bottom right corner, click in the bottom left corner, or click or tap with two fingers. I like click or tap with two fingers. You also have your click, how strong it has to be, if it's medium, light, or firm. Your track speed, I crank that up because I like it to track super fast. You have your scroll and zoom where you can change how you pinch if you want to pinch to zoom. Just like you do on your phone, you can double tap with two fingers to smart zoom, which just automatically zooms in. Then you can rotate with two fingers, which is a super cool feature if you're looking at photos and things. You just simply rotate on the trackpad and it does it. So it makes it more like a like a screen response, almost like if you were using your uh, your iPhone or your iPad. More gestures are over here. You can set up all kinds of cool things. So if you swipe up with three fingers, you get the mission control, which is the desktop display that I was showing you guys about. Um, if you swipe from the, the right edge with two fingers, you get your notification center. You can spread with the thumb and three fingers to show your, show your desktop, which is a really, really cool feature. It kind of looks like that. It'll automatically just kind of move everything out of the way so that you can see your, uh, your desktop app. Uh, expose is cool. You could swipe down with three fingers to get that as well. So there's some really cool features there, guys, and you should definitely mess with it. Just go to Spotlight, go to Trackpad, and then you can edit all of the things that you want. If you don't like it, you can always click off it. You don't ever have to use it again. Another cool feature is you can share any file. I kind of went over this, but if you right-click on any file, you just click on Share, and you can share that file. You can share it in your iCloud Drive. You can airdrop it, which is super popular and great way to do it. You can put this in your notes, or you can mail it. So... Definitely super cool and easy. Mac likes to make things like that where they're just super easy in it. And that's one of the reasons that I, I love having uh, a Mac. Um, another cool thing that I want to tell you guys right before we're about to be done with this one. And we will be back with another one, so don't worry. Um, I like using shortcuts and there's tons and tons and tons of them on a Mac. The cool thing that you can see when you, when you want to figure out some shortcuts is if you click on anything inside of a Mac, if you look on just the right side here, it tells you what the shortcut is. So if you want to copy like we were talking about, that shows you that it's Command C. And so it shows you super, super cool things to do. Um, with the new row inside of the new Macs, you can start to take dictation, for example, by just clicking on the microphone. So there's there's all these other functions that it allows you to do as well, but uh, shortcuts make everything a lot easier. So if you type it, if you click on command space bar enter, it's going to bring up your applications bar really fast. You also have option and command options. Um, you could set up shortcuts. You could do all kinds of cool things, but I think that uh, shortcuts are definitely something that you should um, definitely experiment with and get used to because it will make your productivity and your workflow a lot faster. All right, guys, well, we went over several tips and tricks in this video, and we will definitely be making more. Like I said, this is going to be a series. So if you guys like this video, make sure you hit like. Also, subscribe to the video so that you can see um, 
more videos as we continue to make more videos in this series. And also we have a new membership button. If you guys click on that, you're going to get some exclusive access. You're going to get some access to memes and different cool things like that too. But like I said, go to your email, type in jmedia1 at gmail.com. Go to subject, types in tips and tricks, and tell me what you want to see. And when you tell me, I will make the videos. I will show you guys how to do some very cool things. Until next time, guys, we will see you later. Later, guys. Mm -hmm.